Hello guys, this is Julia from Just One More Card and I'm back with another guest design video for Whimsy Stamps. Um, this stamp here of this girl, the uh, stamp is called September Rose, is also from Whimsy Stamps. It's a red rubber stamp that comes mounted, so you can use it right away with your acrylic block. And I think this stamp is just absolutely perfect for practicing um, coloration of hair and clothes. I've prepared a card base here. I've put some pattern paper onto my card base. As you can see, I already did this uh, simple stuff. I didn't need to show you this because the video is already very long um, and I have a panel that will go on top of this. Now um, I'm using my uh, pretty pink posh dye here and some micro pore tape to hold it in, in place and uh, what I'm interested in is actually to die cut this oval window into this panel and now I'm die cutting this uh, the same die into some of these this pattern paper because I want a I want this frame to be the same way as the background and then I will inlay this with the white piece here. It's all gonna make sense in the end, trust me. Well, please. Um, I'm using my stamp -a magic here for the stamp and that is simply because the stamp is basically as large as, or actually a little bit larger than this white piece onto which I will stamp. So I adhered the white piece with a little bit of micro pore tape onto my uh, craft surface, placed this acetate there where it needs to go, and then I slide my stamp back into the stamp -a magic and that will ensure that it goes exactly where it needs to go. You know, that's simply because I didn't have enough, I wanted to make sure that I would stamp exactly where, I needed, uh, where it needed to go, and for that the stamp -a magic was super helpful. Um, the micro pore tape covered up a little bit of the um, this thing here, so I just went in with my Copic Multiliner and drew in the lines. It was tiny, it was not a huge deal. And now to the coloring. Um, I That's why the video is so long. I wanted you to see the entire coloration process and I've only sped it up um, like by 100%, so it's like twice as fast that I would, as I would normally color. I intentionally did not go any faster than this because I have received some feedback from you guys um, that you weren't clearly seeing what I was doing and so I wanted to show you like the entire process here. Now as I always uh, like to say um, the like the where I learned this like this didn't just come to me I didn't have an epiphany I wish. Uh, I took the uh, cloth um, coloring class from Kid and Clowder. It's a Copic coloring class, and but the principle is applicable to pencils as well. Um, so I took this class to learn how to like color folds. And here in this dress, you can see that there are some artist drawn lines which indicate where folds are. Um, and you can just imagine that if this dress has folds, then there are areas where there are shadows because they are further back or covered or partially covered up by something and then there are areas where there's where the light hits so they will be very light and you can see here that I'm very gradually working my way from dark to light and I have to say this is my third coloration of this image I did two test runs to figure out where the folds will, would go because I wasn't entirely sure myself so um, don't be discouraged if you look at something and it's not clear to you like where everything goes uh, like I did I do test runs too, because there's sometimes you guys say, oh, you know what, you're a pro and you know all of this. I really don't. I really don't. Sometimes it's really just guesswork, more educated guesswork now. But I do test runs. I, I do test runs to see if my imagination actually works out, if it looks good in the end or not. So you saw me here prog uh, progressing from dark to light um, and then just using a very light color here on the rim. Um, and... I think oftentimes we forget that our minds mind fill in fills in a lot of stuff. So you just need to hint at the folds in her dress in order for like somebody looking at it uh, immediately seeing what we're trying to to show. So and also um, I took the I started with the clothes coloring class. I still haven't finished it. I started with it two years ago. So it took me two years to get to the stage. Um, so when you are just a beginner, if you haven't yet practiced a lot or haven't dared to practice a lot, I do encourage you to check out the class. If I don't forget, I will have a link uh, for it in the video description below. I'm not affiliated, just a very happy customer. Um, but it took me two years to get even to this stage, and I know there is still lots of room for improvement for me. Um, like I don't, like I know I've gotten much better. 
I admit that. I'm very happy about this. Very proud of this as well, I have to admit. Uh, but I know that there is still a lot of room for improvement. Um, and I am excited every time I, I do this um, to see how I can apply my skills, how I can experiment and improve my skills and learn new stuff. So if you look at this image and you go, oh gosh, I could never do this. Like I wouldn't even know where to start. First of all, I do encourage you to take the class. Um, because I feel that is something, if somebody explains this to you, you're going to go, oh my goodness, of course, like, how could I not see this? This is so easy and so obvious. Um, but if nobody ever explains this to you, it's a little bit like snowboarding. You see people go down the hill, but you don't see that they're doing frontside and backside, um, like with little shifts of, of balance. And if nobody explains this to you, you will always land on your backside. Um, so... Take the course, take a class, and it will become much clearer to you. And then, of course, you need to practice. Like an image like this, I would have not dared to go close to it two years ago. I would be like, no, like the dress, I don't know how to color the dress. I have no clue how to color hair, not in the slightest. I would never have touched it. And when Denise asked me to be a guest designer for Whimsy Stamps and I had to look at their wonderful products, I saw this stamp and I immediately knew I had to have it. I immediately knew this was the stamp that I wanted to work with, one of the stamps, but this one was always clear to me from the very beginning because it's fantastic to practice light sources and shading and how to color clothes and hair. Like, not so much skin, there's not a lot of skin showing, but for clothes and hair, this is a wonderful image. You can always um, use different coloring mediums if you've mastered one of them. You can use different color combinations. You can try all kinds of different techniques. So this is a stamp that I will be using a lot to improve my own skills. Like this is, I just, I absolutely love this stamp. It's amazing. So while I'm babbling on here, uh, my, I'm doing this, uh, <laughs> I'm doing this late at night. Uh, I'm all by myself in the office. I'm currently living underneath uh, the office office in an apartment owned by the company that I work for. My cat is lounging on my colleague's chair. I always have to remember to clean the chairs after we go downstairs so there's not a lot of cat hair ev everywhere. Um, so I'm totally chill when I'm like I'm watching myself doing this and I'm so happy watching myself, myself color this because I remember just how much fun I've had. Um, and as I said, this is something that comes with practice and over time. I think most people will not grab their markers and immediately have the skill set um, to do a coloration like this. It really doesn't take a lot of practice. And you can see that even though I've sped this up and this twice as fast as my actual coloring was, um, it still looks almost normal speed. And that just shows you how methodical my strokes were, how much I made sure to to know what I was doing and not just like color wildly, but do stuff methodically. Here I grab my blender pen, the zero pen, and I'm just dabbing it onto the head there and waiting for a few seconds. Uh, and that will give me a nice pattern, uh, nice pattern later on. You will see it like when, when it dries, it becomes much better, much clearer to see. Now on to the jeans. Um, that actually took quite a bit of experimenting. That's why I had two trial runs because I needed to figure out um, uh, if I think that the light hits the jeans. It's actually inconsistent with the dress above it. But anyways, if the light hits the jeans from the upper left, uh, like how far do I need to pull the shadows? And I did some experimenting to figure out like how, what would work and what not. And by the way, all the Copic colors that I'm using are listed either in the video description below or on my blog. I always list all the, uh, the colors that I use. And uh, now when you color, and you, I think you can see that here, when you go over a dark color with a lighter one, you um, lighten it. That's just a property of the alcohol markers. And that is the reason why I usually go over my... Um, over my areas a second time. Right now I'm just uh, interested in laying down a base, uh, base layer of color 
and to have a general idea of how far I want to pull out my shadows and where my highlights will go. And I try to err on the side of highlights, meaning I'm leaving much more space for, lights, uh, for light colors because um, it's easier to fill in darkness or like dark colors than it is to lighten up dark color. So I'm making really sure that I have enough space here to add a nice highlight and uh, if like here, the color doesn't blend immediately. I'm just going over that edge where the lighter color meets the dark, meets the dark color uh, quite a few times until this blends. Like if you feel that your colors are not blending properly, just go over the edge, not once, not, not twice, just go over it over and over and over again until you're happy with it. I know it's unnerving at times, but I feel that sometimes you really need to make blend a lot more than you would normally do. And here I'm again grabbing the colorless blender and I'm just going over it and adding some streaks. I'm not um, uh, resting the, the marker because I don't want it too bright. I just want to have some structure, some texture to the jeans. Uh, so it looks more like, you know, like jeans and it's not totally smooth. That's a nice thing that you could use the colorless blender for. Now here on her belt, I don't know what this is called, on her belt I'm just showing you like uh, parts of it because this, it's the same for the entire rest of the belt. Adding some dark color, blending out towards the middle tone and then going over it, over it with the lightest color, that's it. And that's how I did the entire thing. It's very easy to do and very, well, it's not quick, but it's, you know, it's fairly easy. I decided to tie in the green in her headband as well. And again, um, this is my preferred method of coloring. I'm putting down the darkest color first so I know where my shadows are. And I'm trying to always keep in mind, you know, you need highlights, you need highlights. Because I tend to forget that sometimes. So, as I said, I try to err on the side of highlights. So, leaving more space for the highlights than I maybe need but I can always um, blend in some darker colors again. And you can see here that I'm uh, leaving, for example, this middle part there white, uh, because I know this is the part that, uh, this is a fold that will stand out. This is basically higher than the rest of the, 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 um, the headband. And this is where the light will hit, so it will be lightest. So it's totally okay to leave stuff um, white at times because it can always come in and add color later on, but you cannot really take the color away again. So if you're unsure if this is going to be a highlight or not, just leave it white. Just don't add anything. Color in the rest of the image and then look at the image and try to get a feeling for it. Like, is this a highlight or is this a shadow? And you can see here, I'm going over it with my lightest color, so of course it's not white, but you can see the dimension that I've created by leaving it white until the very last color. You don't have to add the middle tone to everything. That's completely okay to not add it to everything because that will just give you a very nice highlight. And you can see here that the blending wasn't quite as smooth as I wanted, so I went over it numerous times. Now for the hair. Um, I also took a class for hair and skin, uh, kit and color, of course. And hair is still very difficult for me. Um, it takes a lot of time for me to figure out like where the dark parts go, where the light parts go, and how to shape the hair, how to make sure that it looks dynamic and not flat. And I still struggle with it. Um, and it took me two years to get to the point where I could even make those thin strokes, because usually my strokes are very, very thick, not sick, thick. I'm German, I have problems with the TH. Um, and it, 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 it's still a lot of mental work for me to understand what I need to do in order to get the look that I want. So this does not come easily to me. I, I really do struggle. And as I said, this is the third time I've colored this image and that's mainly because I needed to practice the hair um, because I needed to make sure that I got, I got the hair right. Um, and I'm, I'm starting out with my darkest color and putting in like, the shadows where it would be darkest and I know that this will lighten up when I add subsequent colors and another thing that was very difficult for me to grasp but it's very very important is to leave those white spaces even now when I come in with the rest of the colors and I'm pulling that out and I'm just you know like pulling out a little bit the color but I'm leaving a lot of white space that is super important because you need those highlights and 
um, the part that I struggled with most in, since the very beginning was to A, leave that white space because I always wanted to fill it in. But as I said, you can always come back and fill it in later if it doesn't look good. And the other problem was that I just couldn't get my strokes to be thin enough. And through a lot of practice, as I said, it took me two years to get to this point, I realized that I'm, I'm very heavy handed. Like I, um, I, I tend to tense up sometimes when I color, especially when I concentrate a lot. Um, and then I apply a lot of pressure. So I make a conscious effort while I'm coloring to relax, to breathe, and to keep my hand relaxed and not push down. And it's, it's, not, it's not easy for me, it doesn't come easy for me. Um, so that's why it took me so long. But I, I keep stressing that it took me two years so you guys don't feel like you'll never get there or you cannot do this just because you may have just started and haven't had success yet or you feel you're not successful just yet. Um, I'm still learning, I'm still experimenting, I'm still not entirely sure of what I'm doing. So, and this is, it took me two years to get to this point. So please do not feel um, disappointed or hesitant when you look at your own work. Don't compare yourself to me. Like I said, practicing for two years here. Um, everybody has a different learning curve. Everybody needs a different amount of time to get to a certain point. And it's different for everybody. So don't feel bad if you haven't gotten there yet. You will. Just keep practicing and you will. Now you saw me finish up the first uh, layer of color and the color was quite muted by the end. So I'm coming in with my very darkest Copic marker and just enhancing some of the shadow areas. I'm sorry that I didn't show the entire process. I in uh, unintentionally went out of the focus range of the camera because I was so focused on coloring. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry. But you saw the previous process, so that was basically just the same thing, but coming in with the darkest colors once more for the hair. Um, now I'm just uh, just going to show you one flower here. I did the others basically the same way. I start out with a darker orange and then blend my way, or like a brighter orange, and blend my way through a darker yellow towards lighter yellows, which gives the flower um, uh, some dimension as well. And you can see here I'm leaving lots of space for the lightest color, so I'll have a nice highlight and it will actually stand out against the midtones. Now for the basket here, I actually drew in the lines like this, these crisscross lines uh, and then went over it with my lightest color to blend everything together to make sure, made sure, make sure I had some nice texture here. And I'm just adding some of the darkest color where the clothes and the rim of the basket would cast a shadow. And then I'm just blending this towards the lightest color. Just being very soft here, but I want to have nice dimension. And you're just adding tiny little details just to make sure that it looks good. And then I added, uh, grabbed my white gel pen and just added like some accents here. So it l really looks as if like the, the basket like hits the light, like parts of the basket hit the light. And now for the ground here, I just used the flicking. It's great like for grass, you can practice your flicking techniques. And I'm using different greens here um, to tie in also like the green background on my card base. And I'm just using different greens here for the grass, mixing it up a bit so it looks more interesting. And I'm of course, I'm coloring over her pants and jeans because she is standing in the grass. So it's totally okay for it to, um, to reach into, into the leg area there. And that's it. So here is the finished coloration. It took quite a while to get there, but I had a blast doing this. Now I put everything together. Here's the panel and lots of foam tape um, to keep everything together. And now you can see here why I die cut this frame again from this pattern paper, because that ties it in really, really nicely. I feel at least. I think this looks really, really awesome. Just and then once I had this adhered, I trimmed down the bow because now I knew how much, uh, like how much I would need for off this bow. Just tying it up a little bit here. And here's the close up uh, of the coloration. And I hope you can see that maybe. Oh yeah, here you can see the glossy accents that I added to the flowers and to the to the apple here. So here's a still of the flower here on her hat. I just love how it catches the light. And it's also a little bit dimensional, just a little bit if you rub your finger over it. It's so much fun. It's just, ah, I love it. Um, here are, here's the basket with those white highlights and the apples, which are also coated with glossy accents as well as the leaves. And I added some stardust to the rim of her dress, like just some dots. And here you can see her hair. And I'm not entirely happy with it. I have to admit this. I like my test coloration better. But, you know, as I said, 
I keep practicing and at some point I will be able to do exactly what I want. Of course I had to add some sequins by Pretty Pink Posh to this card. Um, I, don't, I had like the perfect color that matched exactly the pattern paper and the brown matched the, the twine that I used and here's the entire card. Thank you so much for watching this very long video. I hope you got inspired, learned something new. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask here in the comments or over on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you again soon. Bye bye.